Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I drag and drop number three? So let's go ahead and look at what we have so far. For drag and drop number two, we basically learned the class version, where we could add basically extra variables and we're able to pass along some basic information. But that's what we did. We passed along information. The payload version basically allows us to actually pass along an object. It's something that is physically there. It's not just information. And it's an object so it can contain data. Let's go ahead and look at how this works. I'm going to go ahead and run the example. It's not going to make much sense. But when we drag off of here, I'm actually changing our icon to be this little sword. And then when I drop it on our return point, it's going to change this to be the sword. Now I'm not using a reference to do this. I'm actually passing along an image texture using that for my drag drop operation widget. And then once I receive it, I am displaying the texture that was passed along as data. So let's go ahead and look at this. If we do a create drag drop operation, we're going to get our basic drag drop operation here. And you're going to have your default variables, default parameters that come with it. Keep in mind, just because we're using the payload for this doesn't mean you can't have your own custom class. You could have this custom version with these extra options in here and still pass along a payload. Payload comes by default with the default drag drop operation parent class and the way of passing objects and data. Now, how are we going to use it? Well, this one's pretty simple. I've created an object by doing new blueprint and typing in object and creating, oh, not that way, um, dagnabbit, it's right here. It's a new blueprint class called object. Uh, here we go, right here, object at the top. Duh. Hit object and hit select. And an object is gonna be, let's just do new object. It's, it's your base class. Everything is basically consistent, con consistent consists of an object. This is your base. Now, after you create your object, you can fill it in with stuff you want. So a lot, so kind of like our class version, my object version for my skill, this is gonna basically represent a complete skill. It's gonna have information such as an ID, a name, and a cost, and then an image, which is a texture 2D. Now, yeah, we could pass this along as part of the class version and pass it along for uh, as date um, passing along the data rather than passing along an object that holds the data. But think of this maybe as if we had an inventory. You know what? Why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and take and we will duplicate this. And we're going to call this one object item. So this is an object that represents an item. If we were to go in here and we went to, um, you know, item ID, and this would be the item name, this would be the item weight, and then this would be the item image. So this is an actual object that's going to represent an item. This item is going to be in our inventory or perhaps on our character. It's going to be a, it's going to physically exist inside of our game world as an object and it will only exist in one space. So if it's in our inventory, it's going to exist in our inventory. If it's in our character sheet, for example, it's going to exist on our character and not in our inventory. And if we drop it into the world, it's going to exist in the world and nowhere else. So we're using the object version of this to ensure that there's one version of this that we can then pass around. So we have our object item. Let's go back into our draggable item and this is of course you know drag and drop using a payload we're going to call this our object item yeah which i did not spell right it was obj item correct there we go and this is going to be our object item that we're going to construct and we're using our construct um yeah construct object from class node, which basically allows us to simply fill in who owns this, fill in our object, and then create an object. Now let's call this item ID, where item ID is gonna be zero, uh, one. Our name is gonna be an apple. No, we, we have a sword, why, 
What do I have for images? You know what? Let's see. Let's call this a glove. So this is our bronze glove. And our weight is going to be 5. So now we have an actual object we are going to construct that we can pass around. And these are all funky because I've re-changed the type. Okay, so now that we have an object we've constructed that we want to pass along, we need to pass it along. And this one's pretty simple. We could plug it right into our payload, which, let me unhook this while we fix this. Oh, I hate that. Okay, this stupid... This reroute node is of a certain type, and I have to reroute it just to make it work properly because we've gone from our object skill to object item. So there we go. We're going to construct our object and put it into our payload. Now this object, after it's created, will physically exist in our game and will be passed along inside of our drag drop operation as an object that we can do stuff with. Now to make things more dynamic, when we create our draggable widget, which keep in mind in our other examples, I just basically chose a square. We have our little draggable image and it's just this little square. I wanna make this a little more personalized. Since I actually have an image that I've created, not created, but assigned to my object, let's use that image. So let's go ahead and pull out the image itself, which of course I need to get the image because we're getting the item image, not the skill image. So let's find the item image right here. And we're going to plug this in to our input texture. That way when we create our widget, our widget is now going to have the texture that we tell it to. And then we're going to plug that into our drag visual. Let's play this and now when I drag it, we get our bronze glove. Of course we had a sword before because I used a sword icon, this time I'm using the glove. But the point is, I'm opening up that object and pulling out the image. Now we want something to happen when we drop it. Well this is pretty simple. We can ignore the error because I haven't finished. We go into here and we're going to go ahead and grab our operation, grab our payload, and then make sure we do something proper with it. Now we got that error because I told it to cast to the object skill, but we're passing in an object item. So we need to fix this. So we're going to cast to object skill uh, item. I'll make it a pure so I don't have to worry about the execute nodes. And we're going to delete these because they don't exist anymore. And as this object item, we have everything we shoved into it. We have our item ID, our item name, our item weight, and then our item image itself being passed through. So I can go in here and I can go, let's, let's get the name out of it. We'll get our item name and that's what we're printing. So now when I run this, we're going to print out our item name when we drop bronze glove. And then we want to set that texture to represent our image. So let's go ahead and get the item image. This is that texture we're passing along in the payload. We're setting it up to become the new image when we drop it. And now we have this bronze glove. Obviously, well, let's do the little match size. Let's see what happens when we do that. Whoops. There we go. So it's still going to look funky because I have this one set to stretch. But the point is we are passing along something. Under this mouse is a payload, inside of that, not a payload, under this mouse is a drag and drop operation. Inside of that drag and drop operation is a payload. That payload consists of a object item. And inside of that, we have a few variables and a texture that is the glove that we can then pass along. Once we receive the drop, we can then do whatever we want. In this case, I'm printing the name and I'm pulling out the image and setting that as the brush. So that's how we'd use the object. The nice thing about this, since you're passing along the objects, let's say you had a universal. So anyways, this is gonna wrap up the video. That's how we would use the payload version. We would create a payload. You could construct an object. It's usually the easiest payload to pass along. Fill out the object. So we could pull this from a database, for example, or pull it from somewhere else. In this example, let's say we had an inventory. We have an inventory array full of objects. I would pull out that item and plug it into my payload here. And then after it's done, I would then remove it. Or 
a possibly saner way is to take my inventory, construct a new item from my inventory that I'm going to pass along, and remove it from my inventory at that point in time. So that way it doesn't exist in two places at once. I've pulled it from my inventory and now technically it's part of the drag drop. Once the drag drop operation gets it, wherever we're dragging it into, say the environment, if we're going to drop it to the ground, the character, if we're going to equip it, or maybe the hot bar, if it's like a potion and we want to use it on the hot bar, it will then accept it. It will pull out that item. We could then create another object if we want, for example, delete it from our drag drop operation so we're no longer playing with it, and then now add it into the recipient, be it the character or the ground or something like that. So that way we have a usable inventory system by using actual objects to pass along things that represent each piece of the inventory that the player has.